Tina Wade joining us in worship. We are Pilgrim Congregational Church where we serve a still speaking God. We are part of the United Church of Christ, which is a denomination that is raising their voice as an alternative vision of what the church can be, where God is seen as all loving and inclusive. In a time when many find church narrow and out of touch, we here preach a progressive gospel. Here, barriers of ethnicity, class, and sexual orientation are torn down. Here, everyone is welcome. So, wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you are on the spectrum of your life's journey, you are welcome here. So thank you again for joining us in worship. Let us begin. Make your own heaven and hell 
right here on earth, right here on earth. I resonate with that idea of heaven because it puts us in creative partnership with the Almighty, the Creator. This articulation moves us past the limiting imaginings of otherworldliness, but places the image of heaven, ultimate goodness, ultimate peace and harmony as something that we all have a part in creating. I mean, how do you move people to a vision of what life could be without evil, without greed, without oppression, without exploitation? How do you, how do you describe that new world order? Well, in today's reading, John struggles to find the language to express and describe a new created world order. Spiritually, John calls readers to see this world as one in which God will transform what we know today into something that is beyond human imagination. John talks about a, a new heaven and a new earth. It is significant that he speaks of a new heaven and new earth rather than a completely different something else or a somewhere else. In short, he wants to speak of newness as things and a place where evil is no more. You know, evil, things that destroy the human spirit. Evil, things that destroy the earth. Evil, things that oppress. Things that foster hate. Evil, with all its consequences and implications and overtones. But in the newness, all evil is gone. So too is anything like separation and alienation and distance between God and man and between human being and human being. What could be newer than that? The theologian M. Eugene Boring, in his interpretation, commentary on Revelation, writes simply that God must make all things new. No, God does, make, God does not make all new things, but makes all things new. God simply does not replace what has been broken, defiled, betrayed, polluted, destroyed, but somehow God gathers all that up and makes the whole new again. God redeems what we thought was beyond human capacity for hope again and again and again and again. And that's a wonder in that. In this new heaven and earth, the pain of humanity being distraught, being filled with grief, encountering death and terrorism and AIDS and cancer and human brokenness will be no more. The prison industrial complex, no more. Homelessness, no more. A new heaven and a new earth. It's a call for God's new creation to replace this deadly, torn, raped, angry, sick, revengeful, hurtful world. And I believe that indeed God is working, making things new even now. But here's the thing, the church is called to make two choices. First, the church is called to be on the side of God and to be part of the new creation. Don't miss that. This is a call to affirm, as they say in the common vernacular where I come from, this is a call to affirm who you ride with. <laughs> and second, the church is called to make a choice to turn to God or turn to the world. 
Now, if you're unsure about what it means to turn to the world instead of to God, it means in your places of worship, you are focused on entertaining people rather than offering new life. If you are turning to the world instead of God, you are might be judging other people's worth on their income and status rather than their character and where the treasures of their heart really lie. If you are turning to the world instead of God, you decide what to challenge on the basis of who has the most earthly power instead of following the dictates to pursue justice and provide mercy no matter who's in power. And if you're turning to the world instead of God, I submit that you're focused more on butts in the seats than listening to and following and understanding the will of God, believing if you do that, God will provide the increase. God will send the resources that you need. But if you're turning to God instead of the world, it means that you are involved in a here and now gospel that has a lot to say about how we treat those on the margins, the poor, the incarcerated, the immigrants. When you are turned to God instead of the world, you understand that as Christians, we are not called to escape this world but rather called into this new vision of how the world can be. You understand that as believers, we are called to partner with God in ways that will allow the power of God to be experienced in every day, in every way, in our homes and on our jobs. It will dictate how we participate in society. That's the reason God comes down to earth to dwell with us in the first place. To walk among us, to know what we know, to feel what we feel. That's the uniqueness and the joy of our faith, is that God comes and dwells among us. That God became incarnate and walked among us. But it doesn't stop there. That's what this Easter season that we are still celebrating is about. Not only did the empire not succeed in killing hope, not only did the empire not succeed in destroying the call for liberation, not only did the empire fail in destroying the idea that the world can be ordered differently. But on this fifth Sunday of Easter, we also are talking about resurrection. The fact that after all that happened, that Jesus returns, the resurrection changes everything. And it gives us a glimpse of what that change will ultimately look like. Theologian N.T. Wright states it like this in his book, Surprised by Hope. Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of God's new project. Not to snatch people away from earth to heaven, but to colonize earth with the life of heaven. This is not the idea of rapture, being caught up in being to heaven like a Star Trek, episode. This is not that. The idea then is not the goal of going to heaven as a destination, but being raised to life that is so connected to the holy with an imagination that can see a new way of living and being. That you can see a new heaven and a new earth. So much so that you work for it. So much so that you pray for it. That you even walk through the world as if it had already happened. That's 
the saving part. That's what will save you. That is what will liberate you, will free you from all that seeks to control and oppress you. This is what will snatch you up from this xenophobic, militaristic, capitalistic consciousness. That's why it says, I saw heaven and the earth new created. Gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone to the sea. I saw a holy Jerusalem new created. Descending resplendent out of heaven. I heard a voice thunder from the throne. Look, look. God has moved in the message translation. It says God has moved into the neighborhood. <laughs> Making God's home with men and women. They're, they're God's people. And guess what? That's their God. And she'll wipe every tear from their eyes, and death is gone for good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone. Gone. Look, it says, I'm, I'm making everything new. Write it down. Each word dependable and accurate. So, this text from Revelations. I submit is a call to do as the tempting temptations sing about. To make your heaven and hell right here on earth. I know it's hard to envision right now with 45 run amok, with families detained on borders, with children being shot down in schools and on streets, and with corruption, well, just normative. But what is done is done, and what is past is past. But even in all of this, I believe God is making all things new, not only things, if we have the vision to see it, and if we have the courage to embrace it. That's what the old saints of the church sang about when they said, I started to walk, and I had a new walk, and I started to talk, and I had a new talk. I looked at my hands, and my hands looked new, and I, I looked at my feet, and my feet did too. I got my right hand on the winding chain, my soul has been anchored in Jesus' name. They had been made brand new because they saw their capacity in a new way. They saw what they were capable of in a brand new way. They saw the power they possessed in a new way. You know, I went to, um, I was on a trip in uh, jo Johannesburg, and I told some of you this story, and we had a, a, a tour guide, and he took us to this forest that had been devastated by fire. And we were like, mm, why are we going there? And he was so insistent that we go to this place that had been devastated by fire. Everything broke to the ground. And he said, now I want you to walk through this place and look through the ashes of what has been destroyed. And to our surprise, the most beautiful flowers were coming up through the ashes. And he told us that when that kind of devastation occurs naturally, new platforms come up that don't come up any other time. That even amidst that devastation, you'll see buds of hope 
emerging. You will see life that couldn't come any other way emerging. I think that's a lesson for us today. When so much of what we believe and so much of what we have, have worked for seems to be just burned up or, or cut down, but I ask you to look more carefully, listen, and see where the signs of new life are emerging. Look at the rubble of what we thought was going to be and has been torn down. And even in that, you will find some pieces to gather to build a new thing. If you look in the faces that have seen terror and destruction, and have ever seen in those faces people that have decided to choose hope instead of hate, that's your life. I was convicted of this when I talked to a gentleman. I was at an anti-gun rally, and there was a guy there, and he stood up and talked about seeing his mother shot down. And he stood up and said, I'm against the death penalty because life cannot come from death. That's revenge, and me killing the person that killed her will not bring her back. And it was his mother. Look in the faces that have seen terror and destruction and have chosen hope and life instead of hate. Look to the people that are ready to fight the giant of capitalism and the Goliath of hierarchy and patriarchy with just a slingshot yes, of moral integrity and faith. If you look to those places, you will see God's people that this text is pointing us to. And you will see places where God has white tears from eyes. Where God has said no to death and destruction. And the greatest part of this whole thing is God's mercy says every single day we have a chance to try to get it right. Praise God. Even when we don't deserve it. We get another chance every day. Every single day we have a chance to show up in those old places we have walked where people thought death had the final word. That's our resurrection moment. To talk to those old friends and say, you know what, hope is still here. Life is still here. And with God, we can create something new. May God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven.
soon we will move towards our summer worship time, which is at 10 a.m. So the first Sunday of June, 10 a.m. Also, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we talked about this church participating in the all the national church book read uh, evicted. And uh, we had I handed out four copies of the books. If anybody here today has completed their book and is ready to turn it over to somebody else, come forward and turn it over. <laughs> Yay. The others, you got another week to finish, so you can pass it on. We have decided we will have the uh, book discussion later in the summer after Senate because we just have so much stuff going on. But I encourage you, if you have not read the book, to please get it. It's available on Kindle. You can listen in your car or Audible. But let us all participate in this uh, all book read. Amen? Amen. 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 And please don't make me have to be a teacher and call, make a little list. <laughs> I will. I'm not above it. So people of God, as you go about your week, look for signs of life. Don't be afraid of being made brand new. May the love of God surround you, the peace of God dwell in you, and the justice of God compel you. Go in peace and amen.